Hey, this is Seth at Music Teachers Muse. Tune in Friday's PST at midnight for new episodes. See you there. Hey, welcome back. And today we're talking about combating burnout. So if you are teaching even a few days a week, like three maybe, let's say you have three eight-hour days of students, that's a lot in one day. Um, but even if you don't, like at one time a few years ago, I was teaching literally seven days a week. Even if I only had like an hour of students, uh, I still had to drive to them. It was before, long before COVID hit, and I was working enough I didn't have to do online students. And just the amount of driving I did wore me out pretty good. So in addition to keeping your energy level up to be excited for the students, working with kids, man, that I got, I mean, kids love me and I overall love them. But as we've talked about, they, they challenge you in plenty of ways. You have to repeat yourself all the time. They don't take it seriously all the time. And all of those things can contribute to, it's like, there, there's literally some days where you will feel this way. It's like, man, can't I just get a gig worth a damn so I don't have to teach anymore? Because there's days you're going to never want to teach another lesson again. Fortunately for me, and I think most of us, you have that one day that's really bad, and then the next student or the next day or the next week, somebody makes up for it by having like a really great lesson that makes you feel really great about what you're doing. But uh, that's going to be a thing, so just know that it will happen if you do enough teaching. So let's jump into how to combat it. Because you don't want to quit because it's a rewarding job, but you do have to do something to help yourself with this. So the first thing I have to suggest is work on music that is challenging and fun and exciting for you. Remember why you started playing music in the first place. Most of us, well, it depends. For career musicians, we know this is what we're supposed to be doing with our lives. It's what we want to do. It's a profession as well as our passion. It's also our livelihood. But for me, it wasn't like that to start with. I just wanted to learn how to play Twisted Sister songs. So as simple and basic as they are, as soon as I fire up, we're not, not even we're not going to take it. That's, that's their lamest song, even though it's, even it's their biggest hit. You know, Can't Stop Rock and Roll and Destroyer, Under the Blade. Those are the songs that really get me excited because a 16-year-old kid inside here just becomes alive because as a 16-year-old kid, I couldn't play those songs. They were impossible at the time. So that automatically brings me back to that time of when everything about guitar was new and exciting. And that really helps. Uh, I've been working on a Gary Moore solo for Out in the Fields. It's a bastard to play correctly because it's, it's a 16th and 180. But the thing is, it, it challenges me. It gives me something different to do. And it's music that inspires me. Because when you're teaching, you're teaching beginners. You're teaching basic open chords. You know, names of strings. Super basic information that most people learn right at first because most of your students are beginners. So you're not teaching anything that helps keep your chops up in the first place. So if, if you want your musicianship to stay at the same level, much less improve, you have to do this anyway. But it definitely helps you combat burnout because it takes you to a place where you remember why you started doing it. Next thing you can do is jam with other people. Self-explanatory, I know. I mean, like depending on how freaked out people are about being around other people because we're in COVID right now. It's March of 2021 right now. Um, but if you can just find some people to jam with, even if you're just sitting in a room playing acoustic guitars, having a beer or something, it's rewarding because you're bouncing musical ideas off of someone else. Um, like when, in 2019, the last time I did any regular performing, even though I wasn't, I didn't play any gigs at all that year. But uh, I went to and did the Viper Room sunset jam on monday nights i must have done i did at least eight to twelve of those i think i forget how many exactly but i did a lot of it and they would give me one to three songs every time and it was great because i got to play some cool tunes i mean i did a lot of miles i did iron maiden heart dio judas priest uh u2 and a couple artists i can't remember the names of but uh but it was just fun, man. And all the musicians are professionals at that jam. I, hope, I imagine it'll come back sometime. It was the Sunset Jam at the Viper Room on Monday nights, hosted by uh, Eric Himmel. Really great dude. And all the guys I played with and all the girls I played with were super cool and super professional. And that just helps because it's also a good test because there's no rehearsal. 
you know your shit when you get there, you look good or you don't. And if you don't, they don't invite you back. So I must have done something right. But that just, it helps you to actually have a musical outlet. Jam and play with some other people. Pretty self-explanatory, but, you know, if, if you're working as much as I was as a teacher and you're sick of the music scene as it was in L.A. before COVID, it wasn't doing me a lot of professional favors. So it's difficult, at least for me it is, to find other musicians that I really play well off of. So looking for gigs hasn't been an option for me for that I do very often for reasons I just stated. It's just It's just difficult to find something that's worthwhile. Next thing you can do is just write and be creative. You know, just something like writing in a journal can be therapeutic about your frustrations or just whatever's going on in your life at the time. Um, Whether you draw or write poetry or paint uh, or do something else musically or learn a different instrument, you know, learn how to play bass or keyboards or uke like we talked about in, in learning an additional instrument for extra students episode. You know, those are things you can do to combat it. Um, those are the musical things you can do that I can think of for right now. I'm sure there's more, but those are the big three. Uh, and besides that, you know, do something that's not musical when you're not working. Because I, I never thought in a thousand years I could ever get burned out on playing guitar until I came to L.A. Because literally M.I. was the best experience of my life. But it's, it was five, six days a week of studying and, and classes and performances. And I would never take that experience back for anything. But uh, once I started working, I was literally teaching five, six days a week. And I, I think one time I was in the shower and thinking, I literally hadn't, it was the first day in something like six weeks I hadn't played my guitar. And it was actually a nice to have a break because even though it's the fulfilling thing for us, it's what we do, it's who we are, it shows us we didn't choose it. It's just literally something you have to take a break from because it becomes fresh again. Anything you overindulge in usually is not always good. So, you know, having hobbies. Like, I just bought a whole bunch of books I'm going to read pretty soon. I love video games. I'm a PlayStation guy, but I also play Xbox. You know, doing any kind of non-musical activities that add enrichment to your life. So when you go back to work the next day or the next week or whatever it is, you're doing something that takes your mind off of music, even if there's music involved with it. You know, if you're watching, playing a game or watching a a TV show, there's going to be music, but, but you're not focusing exclusively on music at that time. So it's going to be beneficial to you to just take your mind off of music. Like one time, uh, several times, actually, when I was playing with a symphonic metal band in Van Nuys, I would teach all day on Saturday and then drive 20 some miles and have rehearsal for till however long. And the band leader was literally like me and Kevin, my drummer. Um, he'd be like, well, you guys don't have wives to go home to or anything, do you? Let's keep playing. And, and I would just reached a point a few times where my brain just said, <laughs> and it's like, I have had enough music for today. I need a beer. I need my PlayStation. I need to chill out. Because it's just, you, you, you know that feeling of your, your brain and your system just can't take any more input. And you just have to do something else. That's when you know you've had too much musical stimulation. When you, when you literally are, are not enjoying what you're doing. Even though it's your, you're playing, like guitar is my reason for existing if you ask me. But it's just, uh, you know, you, you've got to give yourself those breaks or you're going to not enjoy it anymore. And that's when it really becomes a job is when it's it's not rewarding at that point. So this is why I'm doing this particular episode. And another thing you can do as well is talk to some other teachers and see how they combat it, especially if they are if they literally work full-time, like 40 hours a week. Uh, it, it also depends on what else you've got going on in your life. If you don't have much else happening besides teaching and doing your work, that can be problematic, but for all the other reasons I listed, You know, those are things that you can do to help yourself. But just do things that are non-musical that you enjoy as well. There's got to be a couple of other things you do that aren't musically related or that aren't directly related to your profession. And the last thing I can suggest is take time off at least somewhat regularly. Like when I go home, 
to Indiana, I never fly with a guitar. People are like, you don't bring a guitar with you? No. Especially with the horror stories I've seen of how they handle instruments on some of these airlines. Hell no. But uh, I've, been, I've always got friends, I've got friends back there I can play their guitars if I want to go to a jam or something, so it's not a problem. But uh, and it, this part of it sucks too if you're an independent contractor because you don't get paid time off or benefits. And you have to be careful about taking too much time off because, excuse me, your students will either go to other teachers or quit if you're not there consistently. So I would only take maybe a week off at a time when I was working as consistently as I was before COVID. So that's that's something that's tough to do because, you know, your your livelihood and your income and your ability to make ends meet depend on how much you work. Like any other person in any job, there's no benefits package with what we do most of the time. But it's very beneficial just to take, you know, chill out and do nothing for a week or two. If you can take two weeks off, by all means, it's great. Especially now that you can do lessons online from anywhere in the world. And which that's been a thing for a very long time, but it's just more common because of COVID. So uh, let's just recap real quick. If you can do any of these, this is going to be the, some good ways to combat burnout. So again, work on music that inspires and challenges you and just r- reminds you of why you started playing music at all in the first place, because you love music and you couldn't, you were just excited about it because we all still have that within us. We just need something to reignite the spark now and then. And when you do that, it's a really great feeling. Remember to jam with others and the people that you can just bounce ideas off of or just even play in simple jams, improv, whatever. Jam with other people. Go to open jams. You know, just talk to other musicians. Just be around people, but do something besides think about the teaching environment or something for yourself that's performance based where you can actually really let loose and play because we know teaching beginners you know you don't get to show off or or play anything that's musically challenging most of the time third thing you can do is write and be creative whether you're writing poetry or writing in your journal or drawing or doing anything like that to where it just takes your mind off of it uh fourth thing non-musical hobbies PlayStation, reading, sports, uh, you know, people build things. My, my dad builds stuff in his garage, you know, maybe make a mailbox or out of wood or whatever it might be, you know. Uh, there's lots of things uh, you can do just that are creative or just take your mind off it. But main, the main thing is something that's non musical because you can just reach a point of overload where your brain just can't handle any more musical information. And at that point, you know, you just got to put the instrument down or, or or if you're a singer or whatever, and just do something that doesn't have anything to do with music. So when you go back to it, it's a little bit fresh again. Also, you can talk to other teachers and see how they combat burnout. Cause I'm sure anybody who's been doing it for any length of time has, has experienced this. And if at all possible, and if you can do it even somewhat regular, even once a year, take a week off and don't do any teaching or just or do a very minimal amount because it's just good for the soul. We all need time away from the norm to visit family, to visit new places, and just to do something out of the ordinary so don't, we, don't go, we don't go insane and kill people. So, especially during times of COVID, we've all been locked up like, freaking sardines for the last year, especially in Los Angeles County. So thanks for tuning in and watching. Please hit the bell for new videos. Subscribe, like, share. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Check out our sponsors in the description below. And we will see you next week.